All right. Uh, thank you for being here. We're here with the Sacred Inclusion Network, where we are going to have a conversation for our Generations Month about spirituality. And one thing I love about this network is that I get to talk to people who are in their 60s and 70s, and we also have a solid group of members who are in their 30s. So we get to learn and share, and that's been very important for me. So this is what we're going to do. And I'm going to start with my friend, Bill. I'm going to ask you a very simple, open question. That is, so what does spirituality, or what is your relationship with spirituality? There we go. OK. Yeah, so I, I think it's the most uh, meaningful part of my life. You know, it it, it is the most um, important area of my life. It's because I have this deep longing to become you know, fully aware, to um, to go beyond my own conditioning, to go go beyond my old habits, and to be to be the person that I can really be with my own true self, my own, um, realize my own nature. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's, there's really nothing more important or more, um, what should I say? <laughs> more engaging, more, um, more meaningful uh, than, than, than that. Although uh, it doesn't mean that I, that I'm able to live in this way or that I, I, I live up to the ideals that I have. I, just, um, I, I fall short uh, very often. And, um, and that's okay too, of course, because that's what we're here for in this life. This, this is our, our playground to, uh, to learn how to do it, <laughs> to get better at it. So I'm definitely, uh, going through that process uh, that's the spiritual uh process you might say yeah so that's that's my answer yeah and uh, cool thank you for that answer i appreciate it. the most important thing uh i can definitely relate and so catherine what is your relationship to spirituality or with spirituality mm. i think uh for me i've found a lot of comfort in most of my life uh with like definite truths which give me forms of comfort and control in my life and I used to be really religious I was pretty hardcore Christian for a while and I found a lot of comfort in that identity and then uh I think spirituality eventually became the journey of realizing for me, at least the way that I perceive it, that identities are at the end of the day, inherently limiting rather than liberating. And uh, so spirituality for me has been the journey of like relinquishing those false comforts in the form of identity. And that was so terrifying. And then embracing the idea that as, as cliche as it sounds, everything is everything, you know, and like God is everywhere and everyone. And 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 uh, shame doesn't exist there, only experiences. And uh, so long as you're living in a place of like as much love and authenticity as you you know how to operate within, then spirituality is just the journey of taking that one day at a time. And yeah, eventually ending up, hopefully ideally being the most, like you said, fulfilled version of yourself beyond the conditionings and the and the and the the patterns the programmings and the the cycles that don't serve you what a beautiful answer um i appreciate that i can definitely resonate mm -hmm. um so now bill i want to ask you um from your perspective what is the biggest difference between the spiritual movement of the 60s and the 70s versus the spiritual movement that we're currently undergoing. What do you think? Well, that's a hard question for me because um, I don't know how much contact I have with the spiritual movements today. Um, and and one thing comes to mind right away that that a lot of the contact that I do have is online. So it's not <laughs> like I'm among 
the good people who are you know doing these things and and finding out what they're like and you know and what what they're interested in and all of that um so i mean i i can i can relate to the older spiritual teachers today like Eckhart Tolle for example or uh Muchi or um i don't know if Joe Dispenza is a spiritual teacher or not people like that um now, if I look at those people as my sample for today, and you know, and they're all like uh, sixty or seventy, <laughs> so I don't even know what the young teachers are like. Um, and if I compare them, say, with the the teachers of uh, my era as a young person, um, the first one that comes to mind, of course, is Ram Das, who just died a few years ago. And uh, you know his book, "Be Here Now," and then his you know his trip to India, and just having done uh, so many psychedelics, which was the way that he approached uh, the way that he became aware that there were other dimensions of life beyond you know our, our conventional uh, yeah three dimensional world. Um, so so right there, if you look at him, you you can see a tremendous difference in that. He was countercultural, uh, and I don't even know if we have that word anymore. <laughs> you know, uh, he he was alternative, uh, and he had a long beard, and you know, in the way he dressed. I guess now it's associated with being a hippie. I guess you still have that term, right? Okay, what I don't know what it means today, but I know what it meant then. All right. Um, and then having been initiated into spirituality by psychedelics, which was my case as well. Okay, so that happened to a lot of people, not the majority, but but definitely happened to a lot of people. Um so let's see, are there any other threads here? Um well it it in my mind, it comes down to uh, the the atmosphere of the time and how that affected the spirituality. Because, see, at the time, now, this is only in places where there were a lot of young people, especially, uh, but not only, you know, well-educated young people. Uh, there was a great optimism, a feeling that we're turning the corner. This is a whole new world. Uh, some people thought of political revolution, but the people I'm talking about thought about thought of it as a cultural revolution. So all the the ways of life that our parents taught us, they're all being thrown out, you know. And and the slogan of the time was, among the young people, including me, uh, never trust anyone over thirty. Okay, so that was a kind of feeling that didn't last for, for that many years, but while it lasted, it, it was unique. And, and for me, it was uh, uniquely wonderful. I, um, I just loved it. I, I felt like I was being reborn as a social being by, by being around people who were so open, who were so accepting, who, um, who were so unpretentious. And, uh, uh, it was, it was just, uh, the total opposite of what I knew from my childhood. So, so that's my biggest memory is, is, is really the counterculture environment, the counterculture atmosphere, what it was like. And spirituality was, was an important part of that, but it wasn't, but not the only part. There was a lot of other stuff going on that it was kind of connected to. Okay. So I don't know. That's all I can say because again, I, I just, don't know today's situation that well. Well, that was fascinating to hear your perspective. And I'm super interested uh, what came up for you, Catherine, when you heard that. So let me know. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I started laughing really hard when you said, don't trust anyone over 30, because <laughs> I think that's it's being, I don't know if I'm considered a young, I just turned 31 last week. So I thought that was really <laughs> <laughs> but um but also I find myself uh 
definitely inspired by people my own age or younger than me, but I have a, a deep like thirst and hunger for uh, older people in my life to to help educate, guide, and 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 um, like to look up to. And because I find that there are certain, of course, there's like a certain uh, mentality within certain generations of still being quite like programmed into like particular forms of structure, especially like Reagan era type generations and whatnot. And then there were the the ones who wouldn't believe or, you know, wouldn't trust anyone over 30. And those ones are the ones that like, I want to <laughs> hang out with now. I'm like, I want all of those to be my friends. I want, if I'm going to trust anyone over 30, it's going to be those people who back then they said, don't trust anyone yeah. over 30, you know? Um, so I think that might be a, a flip-flop culturally speaking is that now I think there's a, a strong group of us who seek out um, relationships with people with this particular age gap because they can give us uh, perspectives that we can't, I mean, we can arrive at on our own, but um, it's a different form of food and water to hear it from other people who had gone through it at different times. Interesting. I, I'm, 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 oh, would you, is there something you'd like to say, Bill? Yeah, I just, I just want to mention one thing about that. Um, you know, when I look back on it, I, you know, I, I always wondered, I mean, why did, why did the spirit only endure for such a short time, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, I thought it was just so wonderful. I, I And I believe that it was, that the, the cultural revolution was coming and it didn't happen. Okay. Um, and one of the things, one of the reasons was that, you know, we were so insular. This this is a paradox. Like we were against our parents who were so insular, but then what we did was we became insular in a very different way. Yeah. You know, and therefore we didn't trust anybody over thirty. You know, and when if you think about it, some of the the very best uh, authors of that time that influenced me the most were well over thirty. Alan Watts, Paul Goodman. Okay, I I could you know if I thought about it, I could name you many many many. Okay. Right. So, so, so what happened was we didn't really um, go deeply enough into ourselves to understand ourselves and who we were, um, so that we could then develop an identity that was so broad, that was so inclusive, that it saw all people as part of the human community, and that the differences could enrich rather than have to be fought against. But of course, these were like our parents. So, you know, we were still trying, to, we were young, we're trying to become independent, we're trying, we're trying to fight against what we felt was limiting us. So, mm -hmm. so that led us into these other traps, which then turned out to be also very limiting. Yeah, thank you. Super interesting. Um, Bill, I had a point that I'm going to say real quick, and then maybe I'll pass it to Catherine. Um, you, you mentioned how, like, you know, your connection with spirituality right now is online. And uh, I think that's a huge part of the spiritual movement these days. It's just our access to so much information. It seems like, you know, back in the 60s and 70s, there was more of, like, like the energy being channeled into not one place, but, like, one more specific place. Where now like there's so many people doing so many things in so many realms it kind of feels like like is there a spiritual movement there's just like who it's hard to even know what's going on which is very interesting but um but Catherine yeah I'd like to I guess close with so what do you think about like the spiritual movement of these days like is there a spiritual movement or what does that look like or what does that mean to you and then we can get out of here I yeah, I think, I mean, I wasn't there in the 60s or 70s, so I could be very wrong, but I feel like a large part of like the motivation of that spiritual movement was how much, and not to say there's, was because of all of the um, the political tension in the world and the wars and, and everything. And I think this was like an awakening moment of people realizing what programming was and propaganda and like, let's fight for our own right of like free thought and free speech and just free freedom and individuality in general and that was like such a rich energy because it was a new rebellion and uh 
now I think obviously there's not like necessarily less conflict. It might just like look a little different, I think, but the way in which people are rebelling in the form of spirituality, I think has turned more inward as opposed to back then, perhaps it was like, what's going on? Clearly this isn't the answer. Let's come together and figure out like what love really is and what freedom really is. And uh, now I feel like it's all turned quite inward in an individualistic way, perhaps. And uh, I think everyone is like fighting just to feel okay as an individual. Like they can't even, their scope can't even go beyond their own pain. And they're just like looking for like band-aids for their trauma and their, like that's what spirituality has become is like, um, like wanting to heal and change as an individual and like not even necessarily having the ability for that scope to be bigger picture that's that's the sense that I get these days I don't of course that's a generalization and doesn't apply to everybody but I think it has become and especially with Instagram and so like spirituality has become a fad and uh and it's even fed in quite a way because it's so clickbait ish to be like it's okay you have this trauma and this is how you deal with it and like not to say people don't have trauma but I think it's turned into a little bit of an enabling thing as opposed to an empowering thing and um, so the spirituality topics have become like watered down and convoluted and uh, it's, it's intentions and its perspectives have shifted into something that it was not back then. And um, I think it can get a little like overwhelming and, and also like misguided at times. Uh, I, maybe that was a pessimistic answer, but I was just rolling with it, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let me say something about that because, yeah, you know, you're talking about, you know, the commodification of spirituality. And I think, you know, that the same thing happened with the counterculture. You're, you know, you're so right about the fact that it was much more of a social movement rather than such a just a purely individualistic movement. But that social movement itself, cultural movement, became commodified too. Yeah. And it was reduced to, it watered down and reduced to, uh, you know, something that it originally wasn't. So it's always at, toward the beginning, as you said, you know, it's all fresh and people are discovering and they they want a, a different kind of a life. And it it all comes, you know, uh, that all that energy starts to rise and, and, and then people go out and they search and they're very real in their search, you know, but then, then it seems to ebb and flow and, and again, you know, and then, yeah. <laughs> so in that sense, it's not so different. Yeah. Well, I think uh thank you guys very much. That was very interesting. I got some I got some insight. And um, you know, if you're still watching this video, join the Sacred Inclusion Network and uh have some conversations outside your normal scope of reality. Um, that's why I love this. I don't think you'll get this in too many places. So thank you, Bill. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Um, stay in touch and I'll see y'all Thursday. Thanks, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay.